everybody, I'm Jackie from Multnomah County Library, and I'm here to tell you about some very special books. These books have been nominated to win an award. Nominated means that none of these books has won yet, but one of them will be the winner. The award is called the Beverly Cleary Children's Choice Award. And since it's a Children's Choice Award, I don't get to pick which book wins. Neither does your teacher or any other adult. Kids get to pick the winner of this award. Kids from all over Oregon will be reading these books, and in the spring, everyone who's read at least two of the books will get to vote for the one that was their favorite. The book with the most votes wins. The award is named after famous children's author Beverly Cleary. She grew up in Portland and went on to write the books about Ramona Quimby, Henry Huggins, and The Mouse and the Motorcycle. Her books are great because they're chapter books, but they aren't too long or too difficult to read. The books that are nominated for this award are like Beverly Cleary's books, although they're not written by her. They're fun to read and not too difficult. Let's hear about the first book. Megabat by Anna Humphrey and illustrated by Cass Reich. Daniel and his family have just moved into a new house. It's big and old and maybe haunted. The first weird thing Daniel notices is a mysterious puddle on the floor of his attic bedroom. There's no leak anywhere, so where did the water come from? That night, as Daniel's drifting off to sleep, he hears a small and quivering voice saying, Got buttermelons? Hmm? None? No. He can't see anything in the dark, so he hides under the covers. The next morning, the puddle is back and he hears, Mine is all alone. Cautiously, Daniel approaches the puddle. He hears a drip, 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 drip noise. He looks up into the attic ceiling and he sees two eyes staring back at him. It's a bat. And he's crying, which explains why there's a puddle. This isn't just any bat. He's a talking bat. He tells Daniel he's sad because he accidentally got shipped to Daniel's town in a box of papayas. Now he's a long way from home and doesn't know how to get back. Can Daniel help him? And the next book is Mia Mayhem is a Superhero by Kara West and illustrated by Lisa Hernandez. Every day, Mia checks the mailbox on her way home from school. And one day there actually is a letter for her, tattered and covered with lots of stamps. Here's what it looks like. It says, Dear Miss Mia Macaroni, Congratulations! We're very pleased to inform you of your acceptance to the program for in-training superheroes, the PITS. I look forward to meeting you at your first superhero training session. Best wishes, Dr. Sue Perb, headmistress. At first, Mia thinks it must be a joke. How could she be a superhero? She's mostly known for making messes like the time she took a drink from the drinking fountain at school and ended up flooding the place. Or the time she kicked a soccer ball so hard that she broke the goal. When she goes inside to ask her parents, Mia finds out it's true. Not only is she a superhero, so are they. Her mom can fly and her dad can talk to animals. They went to the program for in-training superheroes or the pits too. But there's only one problem. Usually students start at the pits in kindergarten and Mia's already in third grade. Will she be behind? And when she takes her placement test, will she be good enough at anything? Hi, I'm Kathy from Multnomah County Library and I'm here to tell you about some great books. The first one is called Bigfoot and Littlefoot. Hugo is a squidge, a young Bigfoot, and today his class is playing hide and go sneak. First they smear themselves with mud, then they cover themselves with leaves and twigs, disguising their long red fur. The purpose of this game is to learn how to hide from all humans. But just as Hugo prepares to sneak, a real live human appears. 
Hugo dives to the ground, where he watches with amazement as the boy picks a dandelion and blows the puffy seeds away. It seems such a strange thing to do, and the human looks so funny with no hair on its body except for a messy tuft on top of its head that Hugo laughed. The human looked right at him. Hugo's eyes went wide. So did the humans. For a moment, they were both frozen, staring at each other. His teacher scares the boy away. There's nothing funny about humans, she warns him, writing a letter to his parents. Sent to his room for bad behavior, Hugo remembers his friend Gigi told him the boy blew on the dandelion to make a wish. Hugo decides to make a wish, too. He wishes for an adventure, one that takes him to the big wide world, a world that includes those dreaded creatures, humans. The next book I wanted to tell you about is called Road Trip with Max and His Mom. Usually Max spends weekdays with his mom and weekends with his dad, but then his mom proposes they go on a special mother-son road trip to attend a family reunion in Pennsylvania in honor of great-great-aunt Victory's 100th birthday. At first, Max isn't sure he wants to go, but Max is intrigued when his mom tells him the reunion will take place at Bronco Bill's Amusement Park, a place with rides, barbecue stands, a Wild West arcade, and a roller coaster called the Big Buckaroo. Max is planning to give a book talk about the spine-tingling book of awesome explorers and daring discoveries. And he realizes that now he too has the opportunity to go on an adventure, just like his favorite explorer, Ernest Shackleton. He packs his bag, he and his mom check their list, and they pile in the car. But Max still has one worry. Will his dad be okay if he doesn't get to go on the adventure too? Hi everyone, it's Violetta, and I have a couple of books to share with you. First up is Polly Diamond and the Magic Book. Polly wakes up knowing that something amazing is going to happen today, and she's right. While she's writing a story, she hears a drum roll and a trumpet blast at the front door. When she opens it, she finds a package addressed to her. Inside, there's a turquoise leather book that says, A writing and spelling book for Polly Diamond. Polly is so excited. She loves to write, and this book is empty, so she can fill it up with her own stories. She opens the book up, and on the first page, she writes, This book belongs to Polly Diamond. And then, something amazing happens. The letter H appears on the page, and then an E, and then an LLO. The book is writing back to her. Hello, Polly Diamond. It's exciting to have a magic book, but Polly discovers the book can do more than just write back. If she writes something in the book, it will actually happen. Polly soon finds out that she has to be careful what she writes because some wishes do not come true the way that she intends. Next up is Stinkiest, 20 Smelly Animals. P.U. Some animals are really stinky, and you can read about them in this book. This spiny-tailed gecko lives in Australia. If it is attacked by a predator, it will squirt a stinky liquid from its tail. The liquid turns into long threads like a spider web, which stick to the attacker, giving the gecko time to escape. The bombardier beetle can fire boiling hot liquid from its rear end. The liquid is hot enough to kill an insect or to burn or blind a bigger animal. The ring-tailed lemur has stink fights with other lemurs. The lemur has scent glands in its wrists and shoulders, and it uses them to rub the scent on its tail. When two lemurs get in a fight, they will flick their stinky tails at each other until one of them gives up. The Hoatzin leaves eats leaves that take a long time to digest, which means a lot of gas builds up inside of it. The result is bird farts. Predators do not want to eat a bird that smells this bad. Are you wondering what the stinkiest animal in the whole world is? You'll have to read this book to find out. Thanks for listening to our book talks of the 2021 Beverly Cleary Children's Choice Award nominees. Remember that if you read at least two of these books, 
You'll be able to vote in the spring for your favorite.